Hello and welcome back to another episode of Space Engineers. In the last episode, we were working on our beginnings of Midway Station. And we made out our little taxi pad over here. Got our first ion thruster. Sort of ion th the shuttle that we set up. And we're ready to script it to drive out to the asteroid base and back with a a space engineer in tow. So today, we'll be working on setting up the drone. And pop back into my character here. Now, I haven't done this in a while, but it is actually a pretty easy process. And it just involves having waypoints set up so that your ship will follow it and then dock at the appropriate spot. So, let us... Uh, and also, I've never done waypoint docking in zero G. And this is transitioning from having gravity to not having gravity out there. It will be interesting to see, and we'll have to do some experiments out at the asteroid base, to see how the ship approaches uh, different, say, docking configurations. Uh, where the waypoints need to be in order for that to get to work. We might not be using the stock uh, waypointing and remote control system. We might be using um, something more advanced. But for now, we can get this thing working. We have, uh, should have enough batteries, right? Uh, we got 57%, 58% battery right there, so it should be fine. And let's get to it. So we'll unlock here just so everything is a little bit smaller in our K menu. And we can see what we've got. So first thing I want to do is we're going to be driving around. I like getting all of my backwards thrusters into a group so I can control them. But important thing is we're going to take the remote control here and we want to control from it very often. So we'll put that there. The reason being, and it's an important thing to remember, is if you're in a ship and you make a waypoint, the waypoint is going to be from whatever you're controlling the ship from. So for example, right now if I go and make a GPS point, it's at my cockpit. But if I control the ship from the remote control, and then make a GPS point, you can see that it's at the remote control. And then if I get out of the remote control, we can see that it's, you know, that Kanajashi 2 is three and a half meters away. If I get it back into the remote control, it's right there, 0.3 meters away. So, that is important to remember. And my god, I have far too many, uh, I have far too much stuff all of my lists here. So I'll just delete these for now, because they are not required at this moment. We'll re be remaking one of them. So what I want to do is make sure my ship is just on the connection, nice and settled, facing the way that I want it to, and then we'll make a position. Now, I'm going to have to have a naming scheme for these, and there's going to be like Hopefully, just about like say five or so waypoints for this to work. But I'm gonna preface them all with taxi, and then I'm thinking I kind of need to name like the route, and also I need to do this twice because I'm gonna have a ship at the other end waiting to fly here on the same route essentially then that will then just be available if somebody was at the uh, asteroid station to come to Midway and also something that's at Midway in order to go to the asteroid station. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to go mid for Midway slash aster. So this is like the mid aster route and the other way coming from the other side would be the aster mid. 
just whatever is the origin station will be the beginning and the um, the uh, origin and then the uh, destination I couldn't think of the word there for a second will be the second uh, part of the slash and then another hyphen here and then whatever this is so this is going to be the dock uh, at the beginning so dock one I'll just copy that so I can use it in the future okay so we have mid aster route dock one for this taxi from here I'm just gonna quickly I'll let this settle and then we shall uh, lock and unlock and then we want to raise up a little bit here key thing is we want to just high enough that we are clearing everything anything else that'll be in this area this is going to be our approach position so this is going to be taxi mid aster instead of dock one it is approach one so the ship as it's flying in here come on ship you got way too much uh, lifting thrust for your own good right now it'll fly to approach and then it'll turn and then drop down to the dock awesome now uh, to get out of gravity we could fly straight up but I'm not sure if that's actually required and we could just probably go in a straight line considering the ship is probably good enough to do this so let's toggle the reverse thrusters off and I'm also just going to throw uh, the, come on, the connector onto here with the switch lock so I'm currently using the remote control right now but I'll go into just normal operations and we can start heading off towards the asteroid base and the key thing here is if we need to route around any asteroids because this should hopefully fly straight there i wonder if it would fly straight up i know i know when i did my experiments before and i made the the drone system on the moon that it had a tendency if there was a waypoint and then a waypoint slightly higher but a ways off it would first do the vertical raising up and then fly over to it at that new height i wonder is if i put a waypoint essentially at the edge of space flying straight is the ship going to fly up and then fly over to it i don't know but that is something we need to find out and hell this is an experiment this is what this is for so it's going to take me a little bit to fly there, and if there are any asteroids, I'll have to route around them. But I would just do that by making more GPS points and naming them after the, the taxi here, the mid-aster, dock one, approach one, and then it would just be waypoint one, two, three, four, five, and that would be the, the route from here to there. But it's going to take me a minute to get there as we're coasting along here and I'll meet you guys when we're uh, approaching the asteroid base okay so we just passed an important waypoint there and I'm just gonna quickly make a position as we have made it into space so I'm just gonna go make waypoint one here yeah that's a is behind us but that is essentially just about a direct line between Midway and the asteroid base. That's the edge of space for the planet there. So another 48 kilometers here to coast. We'll get up to top speed and uh, considering the 100 meters per second uh, we should be there in just a couple of minutes.
And here we are approaching the asteroid base. Excellent. So I didn't really run into any asteroids on the way here. There's a couple that are, say, a little close to the, uh, the path. We'll have to see how the AI actually flies it when we set that up. But I think having a position, say, right here-ish as, like, the main waypoint should be good. So we'll go new from current position and we'll go waypoint two. And then we can fly in closer and then set up some more stuff in terms of the docking here. Now, I am concerned about this thing docking properly because I haven't really done remote control in 0G before. But we can test that kind of stuff here. Because we can. So uh, I'm just going to temporarily manually dock this thing to the base right here. As you know, we'll just get some power at least. Get this thing more fully charged. And then while it's charging, we shall set up a dock for it. And I want to do a couple experiments here. Because I think what we might be able to do is simulate landing with gravity. If I put like a mass block on this and I put a gravity generator out here. So that when it flies into this area, it'll go, oh! There's some gravity, and then the AI, uh, like the remote control, will f like f rotate and align to gravity. Hopefully, I mean, that, that's the plan. But we're gonna extend off of here, and so gotta do some cutting down. And I think we'll cut down this one thing here, and we'll go what a long tube out. No, we'll do, we'll do a grid of medium tubes like we're doing the other ones. So we'll do a medium tube out. Uh, or a long tube for the first one in order to get out there and then a grid of medium tubes. In order to have room for these to be relatively, um, you know, useful. Mm, yeah, probably a, probably a long tube first. Long tube. And then we'll go to a junction, and then from here we'll do a grid of medium tubes. Okay, so that'll be the first dock. And I'm thinking... Uh, how, many can really, how many can we really fit on here? I uh, don't think I could really fit another medium tube... I could fit another medium tube from here to the uh, to the asteroid. There's enough room there. But whatever I end up doing for the the uh, the amount of spots here, it is guaranteed. I think that the main one for midway will be in the center here. So it'll be these two connectors, right? There and there will be where the midway station is going to be. Okay, so I actually don't really need to get these uh, welded up besides the connectors right now as they're the only things that are actually kind of relevant and I believe I should be able to pull through this. Not enough construction. Can I pull through these things if I sneak? Ah, ooh, hey, there's building repairs. I can grab through those, can't I? Let's deposit everything. Need... Uh, need stuff in storage. Alright, we'll queue production for things. It's been so long. Is, thing, is stuff working? Oh, stuff is working. Stuff is being assembled. Nothing from the base is running, though. But the personal thing is uh, assembling me some pieces. Needs can 
computers, computers, computers. We'll put those to the front. Oh, hey, computers are being made. Hey, there we go. We got these two connectors walled up. So connector there, and need more steel plate. God damn it! I'll have to tax some build and repairs out here in order to make this uh, build a little bit easier. There we go. Wonderful. So, just like the one back uh, at Midway, the one close is the one that is staying here. So, this one is actually docking over there. So, we'll orient ourselves correctly. And we'll back up. God damn, those, uh, those downward thrusters pack a punch. I probably made this thing having a little bit too much downwards thrust, but again, I wanted to have this thing be able to fly on the moon if required. So this right here is going to be its dock. So we'll align this way. We'll control from the remote control because now that's actually really important. Go new from current position. This is dock two. And then we'll do the same. We'll connect and disconnect. And we'll move up, say, five or so meters in order to clear the area. And just got to finesse it a tiny bit. Just the littlest of taps. And then we'll go this as approach to. So we'll just copy that. And uh, approach to. Okay. So. I. Th I don't know if a ship is going to perform the way I want it to. In space like this. So let's. Let's run a quick test, actually. Because I don't know if this is going to work. Let's do the exact same thing here. Let's put down a quick new from current position. Move up a few meters. Doesn't really matter how far. And go new from current position. And then I'm going to back the ship straight up. So that imagine it was flying in and going to the approach in the dock because I'm not sure if this is going to work properly. Remote control, we're going to want to set up its waypoints, and we're just going to go to those temporary waypoints that I just made. So it's going to go to Kanajashi 2, then Kanajashi 1. And we want it to be one way, four direction is forward. And let's just give it a slow speed limit of 10. And it, we do have a camera on this, so we can assign it a camera. Let's autopilot. So it's going to fly to 2, which is what we want, and then it's going to aim at 1, then fly to 1. That's what it does in 0G, which is not what we need here. We need it to drop down onto it, like, straight down at that point, which is what we need. Okay, so that is a very good test to do. So let's back up. And let's uh, throw the remote control onto here with uh, autopilot on off. The next thing we could try is we can put a gravity generator down here and put a mass block on this. And we can see if doing that is going to make it behave like it does on like terrain, on, on planets with a gravity field. I hope it does. And I don't think I have everything I need for a gravity generator. Uh, so let's queue production. And mainly, oh, I don't have the golden cobalt here. Damn. Okay, this is just going to be a test. I'm going to temporarily, uh, you know, cheat this in just to test this. Because I just need to see if this works. 
and then if it does work I'll come back and actually build it properly but I just want to test this with a artificial mass to see if that is the way this can be done oh look at that now it's like <laughs> now it's falling into the gravity field is it not auto dampening itself no no okay uh, that should probably be fairly... Ooh, let's put it right on... Put it right on top of that there. Come on. Flatten yourself out. And... Yeah, it's falling in the gravity field now. Okay. It is not auto-dampening itself. But let's try flying to autopilot here. So it flies to Kanajashi 2. And then it still rotates in and flies directly in. Ah, uh, but it's just awkward now because it has the weight on it. Okay. So, artificial mass is not going to work for me here. And neither is that. So it's a good test. Good thing I did that little test without paying the resources for it. So that's not going to work. We're going to need to do this a different way. What we need to do is essentially have this thing... Oh, God. Can I change the direction this is flying? I wonder. Because it has the... Uh, where is it here? The remote control. Let me just put all these thrusters into not showing so you don't have to go through them all every single time. There we go. Remote control. We have this forward direction. We can set it a different way we wanted to. We could put forward direction down, and when it flies to those. it like goes belly first and that would work I wonder if we can change that setting midway I wonder if we can fly to one going straight and then fly down to the next going down and we'll definitely need precision mode for the docking because we want forward and then we want it to switch to downwards. So we can do that in actions. So if I set up actions and I go remote control. Oh! It looks like we can. Down. Remote control down. Okay. So this is forward. And I get to Kanajashi 2. And then it will switch to down. Uh, this is me learning this stuff with you guys, so it's actually kind of fun. Forward to that point. And then down to that point. Yes! Oh, it works! And then you would have to switch it at the next point back into up. And so that way it would do the proper motions. Okay, so let's let's set that up. So if we just want to, we'll do the test here. We can remove these two points, and we actually don't need those uh, uh, anymore. And we can set them up with the actual docking points here. So we have our approach to and dock to. So what we want is our remote control. And now this is set as down. We want it to be at forward. We have position, precision mode on. We have a very... Uh, let's make it a very sh low speed limit just for testing here. And uh, we're going to go to approach to, add, and then dock to, add. At approach to, we're going to set this to... Actually, we'll, set, we'll do approach to again. Uh, we'll do the whole docking and picking back up again. Add. So it's going to go to approach to, down to dock, up to approach to and then go back into forward mode and fly away 
So that's what it should be. I'll go waypoint two for it to fly to. So upon reaching approach two, we want to set up actions. We're going to go into the remote control and we're going to go down. Once we reach dock two, we would have a timer that would turn off the uh, remote control for a duration so you can get out. It would dock for that duration and undock and restart the, uh, the remote control. So that'll all be taken care of through timers. And so at dock, the only thing we want this to do is to switch this to up. So that way we're going to go straight down after approach two, straight up after dock two, and then again when we're back at approach two, we're going to go forward to waypoint two, which is out over there. So what it should do is it should fly to approach two, go down, up, and then turn to face that and then fly to it. So the only thing I have to do is I have to make another waypoint here. I have to make sure that when it comes to here and it's at approach to that it is flat. Because if it if I had a waypoint up here and it flew down to approach to and then went down to the other one uh, I actually I don't think it would actually be an issue. Alright, let's test this. So autopile is enabled. We're going to fly forward to approach to, nice and slow. We're going to rotate and then go down to dock to. Okay. A little jank. A little jank. Okay, we need another waypoint in there in order to align us a bit better. And we'll turn off the. Uh, Let's set that up. So we'll come in here. We'll align ourselves with the dock. Allow ourselves to settle. Good. Dock and undock. We'll raise up without moving the gyros right until I'm going to turn off my antenna it's getting in the way here I need to see where approach 2 is you want to align directly to approach 2 and then move backwards so we're sort of making an L for it to approach on and yeah, we can move backwards a significant amount. Say like 50 meters. So this way, it should be nicely flat trajectory by the time it gets into position here. So this is uh, GPS, current position. This is going to be another um, approach got approach two and then the other one's going to be approach three yeah that's just has how it or I'll, I'll figure out another name for this but I just be that for now so for remote control uh, did this all change this is still approach two uh, I probably shouldn't have renamed those put that back to approach to take this one and go call it a line there we go that's easier so I just need the align waypoint at the beginning and that's it because we're gonna go to line and then go to go to approach to then go to talk to then to approach to and then out to waypoint uh, two directly. Or I could just set that back to a line. Just come on back to this spot. Get rid of waypoint for now. 
So the whole thing will be flying out to this location. Okay. So we fly to a line. Then that gets us flying straight in. Hopefully nicely aligned. Into approach two. Ah, oh, we're, we're tipping forward slightly here. And then straight down. Straight back up. And then we turn around and fly back. Okay, that looks like that's going to be a proper dock. Now, the next thing I need to do is add some timers to this so that when it gets down to the dock, it will trigger the fact that, hey, we're at the dock, settle onto the connector for a moment then connect, then wait a duration, then disconnect and restart the um, the autopilot. So let's just run that a couple more times here. We'll fly away. We'll enable the autopilot. So we should fly to the alignment, get aligned for docking. Right there, we're, all, we're lining up. Fly to our docking point. Nicely aligned. Looks like we get a little bit off alignment here, but because we're switching it to down, we get realigned and we go down. And then we come straight back up because there's no time in it. Uh, there's no like delay set into it yet. And then we turn right around and we drive off back to the align point and then route back to base. Excellent. That works. That works wonderfully. Now, there was a whole bunch of time where I was just cruising through space waiting to get here. So my timer on my recording says I've been recording for 50 minutes, but I doubt that. And so I think I have enough time to set up the timer blocks on this. Although, where to put them? Maybe right here? Back along this section. Uh, we need one for settling onto the dock. And we need one for um, waiting at appropriate amount of time at the dock until it disconnects and goes back into space. So, we need just two two little timer blocks, which hardly any components. Boop, boop. There we go. Easy peasy little timers. And the question is where to bury them into the ship here. I don't want them just like sitting out on the surface willy nilly. Um, I guess I could put them in right there's somewhere along there's maybe, or even I could just bury them in right here. Take out that piece of armor, bury them into the back there for repair timers. Probably. Sure, let's do that right here. Right there. And make sure I don't cut off anything I don't want to cut off. And we'll slap down the timer blocks. What orientation? That orientation looks fine. Okay, so there's going to be one that is dealing with the settling when we're at there. So we're going to call this timer settle. And then timer um, waiting. Yeah, that's a good way to do it. So how we want to set this up is in our remote control. At the point in which we reach dock, we want to still have this go back to up, that is very useful, but we also want to turn off the autopilot and trigger... Uh, tr trigger now? No, start on settle. So it's going to go to that position and it's going to get to the dock and then it's going to stop flying the ship and trigger settle. And all Settle is going to do is wait 5 or 10 seconds. Call Waiting. And switch the connector. So 
switch lock. So it's gonna grab the connector. We could also, if we wanted to, we could set the batteries to, uh, I believe you can just set them to recharge. Yeah, that should be good. Recharge on off. So, that'll wait, say 10 seconds. Then waiting will, again, wait a duration. When it's done, we want the opposite. We want first the batteries to be turned back on. Then we're going to want to unlock. Then we're going to want to autopilot on. And that will resume the autopilot where it left off. So if I did this correctly, and I believe I have, because this says, that's just switch lock. I want to very specifically make this say lock. If I press the button here, if I've done this correctly, we should have our ship fly to the point as we're getting all aligned here. We will drop down to the connector. Once we reach the dock point, our ship will stop. We'll settle here. We can see this is waiting for 10 seconds. Probably a little bit too long, but it was at the default. And we've connected. Now, if we go and quickly look at our batteries, they are recharging from the base. And then an additional 10 seconds later, we lift back off. And if we again look at our batteries, they're back to auto and we are back on our way. So now all we have to do is just adjust the time at which we have settle and waiting. So settle probably doesn't need the full 10 seconds. We were fully settled after say half of that. And then the delay for waiting, we'll say eventually want it to be say 30 seconds. So then if I go and re-trigger that and it does the cycle again we're going to fly in and oh, we're a little bit cockeyed here off to the side this will be a good um, this will be good to see if the ship writes itself here yes it writes itself it goes down a little bit of a clunk there because there is no collision avoidance on here Five seconds later, we connect up, and our waiting timer is waiting 30 seconds, and our batteries are being recharged. And this would be when you, as the uh, occupant of the ship, would go, Hey, I'm here! And you'd get out, and you'd go and walk into the base. And the ship would then, automatically, from there, disconnect in a few seconds. Of course, now that I'm, you know, waiting for it, it's going to take forever. It seems like it's forever because we're waiting for it. But there we go. It'll automatically disconnect and the ship will fly home all by itself. So, yeah, I mean, that this side is all set up here. Uh, the only other thing I think I have to do is we want to go back to a line one that is correct. Then we're going to go to waypoint two waypoint one approach one dock eventually so i'm gonna leave this all in here and let's i'll eventually also need to do um, approach one waypoint one waypoint two above all of this in order for it to uh, work but i think this is good we should also be able to change the speed limit, right? Could we? Can we? Uh, can I do that in these actions here? Can I... Can I change... Ah, I can increase speed limit. It just is increase speed limit. So, I it would be whatever that increment is. Uh, it's too bad you can't like run an argument of setting things to a specific speed limit. That would be very nice. I guess not. But, let's see. Um, 
Let's, let's give this thing a little bit more speed here. Let's set it to 100. Let's save. And let's uh, try again. Because I want a decent speed in order to go to and fro these long distances. And I don't think this thing is going to get going really fast considering the short distances we have between here. So I don't think it's going to like slam into this dock at any like mock speed and destroy it. Now this is fine. Even to set it at 100. So then it should lock up. Boom. There we go. We're locked up to the base. We are recharging. Uh, we still have to wait 30 seconds. But then it should disconnect from the base. We get 30 seconds of power, which is useful. Um, although not like super needed because I believe this thing is going to have enough battery to fly here and back without needing to extra charge but another second there disconnect and start flying up turn around fly to the align point which eventually I'll have uh, all the different align points all set up there and then after flying to align turn and take off towards waypoint 2 and here it really kicks into speed because we've got some distance between here and there and now this is be the the real uh, the real test flight here is flying between waypoint 2 and waypoint 1 because that's like 50 kilometers difference so we'll see if it really kicks into high speed with a hundred uh, meters per second gets to waypoint two aims towards waypoint one back on the edge of space and goes hey we have a little bit of a trip here so let's kick it into high gear with the thruster on the back and uh, bam we're flying back to earth entirely on autopilot now, the, the this thing isn't the most fuel efficient. It could coast this entire way, but the AI is too dumb to do that. So the battery is kind of a pressing issue there, but we still have 25 minutes of power, and the batteries are only at, say, 50, like 60%. So I think the ship would be able to get from, like... Like do one round essentially without needing extra power uh, if things get really horrible I can throw a small reactor on these things if not I can sneak another battery in here somehow maybe some extra small batteries just for that little bit of extra power but I think this thing's doing quite well and it's wanting to use all of its thrusters at once god damn stop thrusting everything if anything, I can sneak in even uh, like right here, right underneath this. I could put another battery there if I wanted to. I could. It would kind of ruin the uh, aesthetics of this thing, but it would be physically possible. Uh, what else could I put in? I could theoretically put a hydrogen engine right there between the connector and the cockpit I think is, is two I think two is enough space for that and there was like a connector there through the 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 connector there like a small conveyor belt so then I could get some hydrogen into it and it would be run off the uh, O2H2 generator so that would be good and then this could just have a little bit of extra ice power and then it would have no issues with its uh it's flight time but it looks like we're making our way back and I kind of want to let this just fly so I'm gonna let this fly and uh, we'll see if I run into anything literally if I run into any asteroids on the way there and I just need to do the exact same setup uh, for the dock with the the waypoints here for the dock back at uh, 
Midway Station. However, it's easier because I don't have to do the whole um, switching uh, direction on the remote control. But that is how you dock in zero G with the stock remote control on waypoints is you have to set up them in that way and then switch between forwards and downwards and upwards in order to have it aligned properly. But for now, I'm just gonna let this fly the way back. I'm gonna see where it should theoretically plot me back into right at dock one. So right at the, the waypoint and the, um, the connector that I need. But you see, there's one of the asteroids that I was like, that's a little close, but it looks like we're gonna skirt on past it there with no issues. But I think I'll leave this for now. When we come back in the next episode, I'll have this whole taxi, at least this route completed. And then I think we need to do the next route, which will be a new ship design similar to this, the same structure to it, but with hydrogen. And this will be a taxi from Earth up, and which should be pretty simple to do the docking because it'll be all within, um, all within the gravity well. So I don't have to worry about doing all those switching and stuff. But that's going to be it for now. Thanks for watching and you know, learning with me on how to do this in zero G because I literally did not know what I was doing when I started making this video. But thanks for watching and good hunting out there, fellow space engineers. <laughs>